Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. And it may not be that beautiful, but it's a whole lot more beautiful than they say it's going to be in a couple days. Let us begin our worship this morning with the call to worship. Please stand as you are able. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We acknowledge our own baptism and rejoice in the promise of God's love. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus as he came up out of the water. And God said, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. I guess in the earth, we await the renewing of God's Holy Spirit. O oh God, John's baptism of repentance is for us. We are the ones who have been baptized into your name, but find countless ways to bring dishonor to as sad us as your children. Forgive us for acting as those who have not heard your name, or your command to love you and love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us live lives that inspire people to faith. Your son has given us forgiveness through his own death and resurrection. We celebrate our standing as redeemed and forgiven of our sins. In the grace of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Our merciful God promises you the Holy Spirit to become and be children of God. You are invited to the table to be new, renewed today. Let your faith be fed. Let your life Reflect that love. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. Peace with you. Our service continues on page 147 in the front of our red hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You all may be seated. I'll come back to you guys. Or do you want to sit up here? Okay, let's sit here. Have you noticed that it still looks like Christmas in here? We still have the Christmas tree up, and we still have the Advent candles up, and we still have some poinsettias, those pretty red flowers. Does it look like Christmas anyplace else? Does it look like Christmas at the store? Nope. They got all the Christmas stuff put away. But it's still Christmas here because something hasn't happened yet. The wise men haven't shown up. When Jesus was born, God put a new star up in the sky. And these guys that lived a long ways away, they were called the wise men. They saw that star and they knew that that meant a new king had been born. And so they followed that star until they found the baby Jesus. So today... Actually, yesterday, but today, too, 
we're going to remember the wise men. The wise men who followed that star to find the baby Jesus. Did you notice we had new candles up there? Yeah, Pastor, I did. New candles. We got new candles up there. One of those new candles reminds us of that star. Yeah, lots of candles. One of them, we'll say it's that one right there. It reminds us of that star that God used to proclaim a new king. His son, Jesus, was being born. There's another one, and that one reminds us of Jesus' baptism. Because in Jesus' baptism, God said, this, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And when God made that promise to Jesus, God also made that promise to you guys, too, that you are God's beloved children and that God is well pleased with you. For the next few weeks, we're going to continue to remember all of the ways that God has told the world that Jesus is his son and that Jesus is his Lord. And we're going to light a new candle for each one of those. Pretty cool? Nah, kind of. <laughs> but remember that one part. You are God's beloved child. And God is well pleased with you. Will you remember that? Will you remember that? Amen. We can go back.
The first list, the first reading for today is taken from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of the formless void, God brings light. This familiar story was good news for the Israelites, who experienced much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created and continues to create new life. The lesson reads, In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is taken from Psalm 29. We'll read it responsively as it's printed in your bulletin. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as the king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading for today is taken from the book of Acts, the 19th chapter. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who had received God, John's baptism of repentance, but had never heard of the Holy Spirit or baptism in the name of Jesus. After Paul baptizes them, the Sp Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with gifts of the Spirit. The lesson reads, While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Mark's Gospel reports the story of Jesus' baptism with some irony. The one on whom the Spirit descends is himself the one who will baptize others with the Holy Spirit. The lesson begins. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, 
confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the, the, the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe see. One of my favorite baptism images comes from what is now an old movie. It's called Tender Mercies. In the movie, Robert Duvall plays a down-and-out, alcoholic country music singer and songwriter. At the beginning of the movie, he finds himself at a roadside motel somewhere in the middle of dusty Texas. And apparently with no other plan, he speaks to the owner of the motel, a widow, and he agrees to do odd jobs around the motel in exchange for a room. Of course, being a movie, Robert Duvall's character and the woman, Rosa, begin a romance, a part of which will include a reformation of the man's life. In one of the most important scenes, Robert Duvall and Rosa and her young son are riding in the front of a pickup truck. Duvall and the little boy have just been to church and they've been baptized. There are smiles all around, and the little boy looks up at Robert Duvall and asks him, do you feel any different? Robert Duvall looks around and thinks about it for a moment, and he says, no, I can't say that I do. But that moment is the turning point in the story. Robert Duvall is different. His life is turned around. He has made commitments to that little boy and to his mama. And yes, to God. From that moment on, he is a different person. Those changes will be tested throughout the rest of the movie. And Duvall's character will struggle with those tests. But in that baptism and all it represented, he became a new person. His life was changed. You might say he made a U-turn in his life. He turned around. He repented. When Jesus came down to the river that day, he came to see his relative John. We don't have any idea if they had ever met before, at least outside of the womb. But Jesus did. He went down to the river that day to see John. Of course, it makes sense because everyone was coming to see John. John was making quite a stir in their little corner of the world. He was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He was preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah. People came, of course, to 
see him because he was. He was wearing funny clothes and eating funny food. But they also came because he was saying amazing things. They came because they did indeed realize that they needed that baptism, that baptism of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus came down to the river that day, not because of the funny clothes or John's funny diet. He came that day and was baptized by John, not because he had any sins to forgive or because he needed to repent. John came down to the river that day so that everyone from that moment on Everyone who was baptized would be joined to him. Each person from that time on who was washed in those waters of baptism, over that, those people, God would pronounce those same words. This is my beloved child with whom I am well pleased. Jesus was baptized by John so that everyone who entered those waters would be given that same gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to the Jordan River that day and was baptized by John so that everyone who follows him might truly know the forgiveness of sins and in that forgiveness of their sins so they might have eternal life. Jesus came to the Jordan River so that as God gave all those gifts to all of us, we might be able to truly repent. To repent, of course, or maybe not, of course. To repent means to turn around, means to turn away from our old life and towards a new life, means to turn away from ourselves and our own desires and our own needs and turn toward God's will and God himself. To repent means to turn away from ourselves and to turn towards our neighbors whom God loves so much. Surely repentance means to turn away from our sin, not in order to be forgiven, but because God has already forgiven us so much. Jesus came down to the river that day to be baptized by John so that through baptism, his righteousness might be ours, so that we might be changed, so that we might be transformed so that we might be forgiven. And through that forgiveness, we might repent. Indeed, the life of being a follower, the life of the baptized is a life of repentance. God's promise in baptism is eternal. And our rep response to that gift of grace it's lived out day after day, sometimes minute after minute. The life of the baptized is a life of turning away from all of those things that would draw us from loving God and from loving our neighbor, turning towards the life that God has prepared for us. The life of the baptized is a life of turning away from the darkness and turning towards the light. It is a life of turning ourselves away from all of the distractions and all of the things that would draw us from God and returning to the one who loves us. Jesus came down to the river that day and was baptized by John so that we could truly repent 
so we could truly turn around. Jesus came to the river that day so that we could be transformed. In that movie, Tender Mercies, repentance looked a whole lot like love. As Robert Duvall's character began to love Rosa and her son, as he began to love himself and to love God, he was changed. He turned away from all of the things that were destroying his life. He turned away from the darkness that had ate him up. He tore, turned towards the light and all of the gifts that God was bringing into his life. What does repentance look like for us? Is it seeing our enemies as people that God loves just as God loves us? Is it realizing our ha habits and our behaviors are keeping us from being the people we really want to be and the people God has created us to be? What does it look like for us to turn away from ourselves and turn towards God? Is it being a little less worried about what others think of us and more concerned about what God is calling us towards? Is it being more generous, more kind, more caring? What does repentance look like for you and I? Jesus went down to the river that day and received a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins so that everyone who is baptized might know that God loves them, that God forgives them, that God is well pleased with them. Jesus went down to the river that day so that knowing all of those things, we might be changed. We might turn around. We might repent. Amen. Let us continue our worship, proclaiming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Inspire wisdom and a spirit of proclamation in your church, God of forgiveness. Encourage us to live into the promises of baptism, working for justice and peace in all the world. God of grace. Renew your creation, O God. Restore the rivers in which your children are baptized. May fields flourish and grow. Summon stewards and caretakers of the land to cherish your good works. God of grace. Protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us, God of strength. Accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and the suffering. We remember, especially today, Alan Burke, Pat Embick, Karen Thompson, Judy Bradley, Jim Cruz, Bill Work, Joel Hellman, Jean Page, Tony Wagner, Dave Shaver, Susan Lingwall, Jacques Ray Higginbotham, Doris Peterson. We pray as well, O Lord, for Judy and Ron Bradley as they mourn the death of their son-in-law and for Gail Cruz and her family as they mourn the death of her brother, Jerry. And we pray for all of those whom we name in our hearts. God of grace. Encourage this congregation, God who calls and sends disciples, guide us in accompanying learning from and serving all of our neighbors. Follow the example of following the example of Jesus, God of grace. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit, we remember all who have died and rest in God's care. Give hope to those who grieve, even as we rest in your eternal promise of resurrection. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Be holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of you. Glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you who are communing along with us at home today, and those who are communing in your seats, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We are communing at the rail today. We will begin on the right side and start here and work around the altar rail and receive the bread and wine and then return around the outside here. Once we've finished with the right side, we will go to the left side, but we'll do it the other way. We'll start here and work our way around this way. Let us begin.
We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. It's another really short list of announcements today. But I see that it is our turn at Community for Christ this week. And it might be kind of a snowy day on Tuesday. For those of you listening along at home, if you are signed up to come help with at Community for Christ, if the schools are cam canceled, either Camdenton or Versailles, Community for Christ will be closed as well. Well, today is another important day in the life of America. It's the last day of the regular season in football. And that means the Super Bowl is coming up. And once again, Kent is going to participate in the Soup Bowl Sunday. We're going to collect soups and Chef Boyardee kinds of items because they're filling and keep young people especially energized and ready to go. And to make it a little more interesting this year, we have challenged our friends down at Our Saviors in Camdenton to see who can raise, collect the most food for our respective food pantries. I know how you folks are. We are not going to lose. But we will keep you updated on how the competition's going so that the folks in need in both parts of our community will be well cared for this year. Are there any other vitally important announcements for us to consider this morning? There's a table out there for it already as you come into the... Um, Foyer, entryway. No, it's before it, it's it's before the narthex. Although maybe it's the narthex since this is the um, gathering space. <laughs> it's out of there that way. It's got you'll know it because it's got Chef Boyardee on it already. Do we have any first time? Oh, I hope any we do, they're going to think we're nuts. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? In that case, let's sing our closing hymn. <laughs>
God's call and responding in love. 